So, hi everyone, this is Drew uh, from Amazon AWS ECFT. Uh, I'm now focusing on container metrics and the logs related to work both inside the AWS and on the open source Bruin bit. Hi, I'm Nitish Kumar Murcharla, a senior cloud support engineer with AWS as well. Uh, my major area of focus is containers and container related technologies and services on AWS. So today uh, we're gonna talk about uh, the new feature we just finished uh, inside the Fluent Bait, which is uh, scaling the Fluent Bait Kubernetes filter in very large cluster. So for this topic, uh, uh, this feature is trying to address the scalability issue, which, uh, which is seen in the Kubernetes filter some uh, customer use Fluent D to some customer using Fluent D and uh, they are seeing the API server for struggling and unresponsive when they try to scale up their Kubernetes filter, uh, Kubernetes clusters. And uh, this is due to that Fluent D is spamming the API server with least all pod type of calls. These are expensive calls and uh, can bring down the Kubernetes API server and control plane. And uh, this makes the uh, API server become the bottleneck of the scalability. So let's see the architecture. The request which Fluent B and Fluent B try to send out is to uh, get my data from the API server. And uh, actually this uh, information could uh, not only get from the API server, but also from the Kubernetes. And uh, so the Kubernetes is the primary uh, node agent that runs on each node and the uh, Fluent Bit could instead call in the API server, but uh, just call the Kubernetes to get the same information. So we proposed an idea that we can provide customer an option to get the metadata information from Kubernetes instead of to the API server so that we can uh, unblock from the API server uh, on the bottleneck. And in this solution, we will reduce the request uh, to API server to zero and just increase the uh, one request per node for each Kubernetes. And let's let Nitish talk about all the results and uh, our features. Thanks, Drew. Uh, so uh, for, for this, uh, I have baseline uh, Fluent D first. Uh, with Fluent D, uh, we saw over 67,000. Uh, so, so I created a cluster of 2K nodes and, and over uh, 30,000 pods. Uh, and every node has Fluent, Fluent D agent running on it. So for 30,000 pods, we saw uh, I, I churn, uh, and I was churning at a rate of uh, 1,000 pods per uh, per hour. Uh, at that rate, what we saw is uh, uh, the Fluent D agent was making, uh, the logs that, that you're seeing on the screen uh, shows that the uh, Fluent D agent is making uh, 60, 60 to 70,000 API calls uh, with that churn rate uh, that is collected over three hours of time. Uh, apart from that, we also see a lot of watch and get API calls that are made to API server by Fluent D. Uh, you can also see that the P99, uh, when uh, a list pod, uh, list pods are a list pod is called by uh, by the Fluent D agent or other agents, you can see that uh, the uh, P99 is high high at that point of time. Uh, these are some inter internal metri metrics that I've collected from EKS, EKS servers. Uh, just wanted to showcase uh, 
for for your understanding how how we are under how we know that the list api call is taking a lo lot of time a uh, uh, lot of time here uh yeah uh, these are the continuation of the metrics as uh, as well uh, you can see the list latency uh, is spiky there uh, in the third third uh, third row uh yeah uh, for customers uh, uh, as we are internal uh, uh, to aws we were able to see those metrics uh, uh, from the internal dashboards that we have uh, however customers might not have abilities to view uh, uh, that granular metrics. So I also set up Prometheus uh, on my EKS cluster to showcase uh, the the uh, amount of API calls being made and the uh, HCD request latency and API server request latency metrics there. Uh, I made over uh, 800 uh, lists and get call. Uh, it made the whenever I churned my cluster with a lot of parts uh, in my deployments, uh, I, I see that there are a huge number of API calls being made to API server, uh, due to which my kubectl commands were slowing down. Uh, that is what I'm trying to show in this particular uh, screen with this particular screenshot. Uh, apart from that, what I also noticed with Fluentd was uh, I was running a thousand clients of uh, log test uh, uh, agent that is available on uh, uh, that is available, uh, and uh, each each uh, uh, sends uh, about 600 lines of logs uh, per minute, uh, and I had over thousand clients running on my on my uh, uh, cluster for scale testing. Uh, and, and as you can see, uh, wherever the pods have landed, uh, there, there were multiple pods landed on si one single instance. And I, I see that uh, the Fluentd is taking approximately over, uh, uh, is taking over 1500 megabytes of memory, uh, 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 which is a lot. Uh, uh, and, and also on the bottom of the screen, you can see that the uh, kubectl call that I made to API server took over 15 seconds. Uh, uh, and, and sometimes uh, uh, th this was not the maximum. Uh, th this was th this data was recorded when when I just made an API call uh, or when I just initiated a uh, update to my cluster. Uh, it it sometimes when I whenever I listed all the pods in the cluster, it sometimes took over 60 seconds as well and timed out. Yeah, uh, so later I switched to Fluent Bit with the Kubelet uh, feature that we have developed. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, I am querying for a, a data of over a week. Uh, I've been running that feature for over a week in my uh, in my performance cluster and ran uh, quite a bit of tests on that. Uh, uh, and I haven't seen uh, a single API call being made by Fluent Bit uh, with Q use Kubelet or true flag uh, to API server. Uh, this significantly reduced the amount of workload uh, or, or the uh, reduce the amount of uh, uh, memory pressure on, on API server. And as, as uh, Fluentbit is no more making that list calls to fetch data or like Fluentd. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's all for our sharing. Thanks everyone for attending. Thanks all.